okay hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today we'll be answering computer science paper 3 june 2022 okay so let's go to the first question so tax one tax one is on a database for a furniture company that's 24 max so they say a company sells furniture to customers of its store the store does not keep furniture in stock instead a customer places an order at the store and the company then orders the furniture required from its supplier. When the other furniture arrives at the store, a member of the staff telephones or emails the customer to inform him or her that it is ready for collection. Customers often order more than one type of furniture on the same order. For example, a sofa and two chairs. Details of the furniture, customer and order are to be stored in a relational database using the following relations so they've given us here the relation of furniture containing furniture id furniture name category price and the supplier's name they've also given us customer order containing other id customer id and the date they've also given us the customer order line which contains the order of id furniture id quantity they are also giving us a customer relation which contains the customer ID, customer name, email address and telephone number. The attributes for these relations and other use eventually are details as follow. So they have given us the attributes here, the description of the different attributes, they have given us the data type, means that which type of value that which which type of value can that fill whole? And they've given us the size, the maximum size that 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 of it, of the number of characters that, that that field can contain. And they've also given us some remarks, so we can discover that in some fields, some remarks there are what must be present. So we're going to explain the remarks down. Yeah. So let's continue. The first part says you are to develop a database for the furniture company through the subtax given below. Roman one in your answer booklet. Give an entity relationship diagram that shows the degree of any true relationship that exists between the above entities. Okay, before going straight to the diagram, we're going to first explain what is an entity relationship diagram. So, an entity relationship diagram or model is a diagram which uses basic graphic symbols to show the organization of an relation between data in a database. So it's just simply a diagram that shows how that, that shows how what it uses graphical symbols and shows how your data is being related to one another and shows how your data is being organized in what your database. So it is always most advisable that you should always draw your database. You should also always draw your entity relation um, a relationship model before going to to design it on your machine. Yeah, because it gives a, a physical representation of your database. Is that okay? So let us now see the elements that we have to consider when drawing an entity relationship diagram. Okay, so the basic elements for an entity relation diagram are entity set, attributes, and relation type. Now, what is an entity set? An entity set. An entity set here, yeah, it is what? It is a place. It is, an, it is a person, place, or, or it's a person, place, concept, or thing on which you want to carry on outward data. Like for example, if I go to the school and I want to study each student of that school, so what what am I carrying on data on? I'm carrying data on the different students in that school. So the students would be what my entity set. So in our example, in this question, our entity sets are what the furniture customer order customer order line and customer so simply just what our tables in our database now what are attributes attributes are properties that describe the entity like example what describes a person is his name his first name his age his gender and so on so that's what they call what attributes then now for the relation type is how the relation how one table is being related to the other so let's explain the different entity entity sets that we have. The first en the first entity set customer order. Customer order is an entity set that allows that shows what all the orders of the customer means that all what the customer order it shows it so that's the meaning of customer order. 
So what is also customer order line? Customer order line is an entity set that shows all the customer orders that the company have ordered from its supplier. Then now let's see the different types of relations that we have in our database. We have three types of relation. A relation between customer and customer order. For you to quickly know that customer will be related to customer order, you will see that in the customer table, the primary key of customer is also in what is also in, in the table of what the customer order. That's to show you that it's a relation between what the two tables. So how, how are they related? A customer can what place a customer order. And the relation between the customer order line and a customer order. Remember, we said that a customer order line is to say, an entity set that contains all the orders of the customer that the company gives to its supplier. So a customer order line can contain what? All can contain all what? All the orders of the customer. Then how is furniture related to a customer order line? A furniture can belong to a customer order line. So. We start with by indicating our entity set. So the entity sets are represented using a rectangle. Like you can see, for furniture, it's in a rectangle. Then the next entity set that we have is what? The customer order line. The next customer order and then the customer. So how is the furniture tab table related to the customer order line? It's related through what? That a furniture belongs to what? A customer order line. And now, how is a customer order line related to customer order? A customer order line contains what? All the customer orders. How is customer related to what? A customer order. Is that what? A customer can what? Place a order. Can place a customer order. So for the relation type, we, in, we, 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 we put it in what? A diamond. Then now we also indicate what the attributes of each of the tables and the attributes are being represented in words in overs so when indicating your attributes for the primary key you always underline it to indicate that that's your primary key in that table so now we have to put what the cardinality of our relation like for the furniture and customer order line how many how many furniture can belongs to a customer order line what do we see we see that what many furniture can belong to what one customer order line so here yeah, our our relation type will be what a many to one relation and now for custom order line and customer order what do we see we said one customer order line can contain what all the orders of the customer why a cost why a customer order can belong just to what just to one customer order line so our relation type here will be what a one to many relation now between customer and customer order, a customer can place this word. One customer can place many customer orders. So here will also be a word, a one to many relation. So that's what the cardinality of our relation. So the in the question there was asking that we should in the, um that our diagram to show the number of entity sets that it's the degree. So the degree is just the number of entity sets that are taking part in the relation. So here we have three. We have four entity sets that take part in our relation, so our end, our degree is what four. Okay, we we'll move on to the next question. They say Roman two using a square statement. Do the following using a favorite database management system. Um, in this case, we are going to use Access as our favorite management database system. Okay, they say one create a database and call it cells. So to create a database. We we'll see in SQL, we we'll just simply say what create database and then we we'll give it the name. Then we we'll end with what a semicolon. So we say create database. Then we shall database we want to create what's the name cells and then we we'll end with what a semicolon. Then the second part too says it says in the cells create all the relations given below. So we should create all those tables. Means that in our cell database, let's create all the tables that have been given to us. So to create a table, we just simply say create table. We we'll give a name. We we'll give the attributes. We we'll give the data type, which we we'll data types of the attribute, and then if there are any other criteria, um, criteria or conditions, we can give or any constraints we can give. So let's start with the furniture table. So we we'll say what create. We we'll say what create table. And we'll give the name of the table furniture. We'll open our braces, our bracket. Then we'll give the attribute. We have furniture ID, which can hold what integers, and it should not be null. We have furniture name. 
which is a varchard, the data type is a varchard of size 15. We have category, the, the data type is varchard of size 15. We have the price, which is an integer and it should not be new. We have the supplier's name, which is a varchard, which, uh, which in the, the data type is a varchard and can hold word. Up to 15 characters. Then at the end now what we indicate our primary key. So yeah, our primary key is what the furniture ID. We we'll put it in what bracket. Now why are we putting not new here? Because in the table that they gave us, if you can remember, in the table that they gave us, we had some remarks that it must what we had some remarks that it must be present. We had some remarks that what it must what be present. So this it must be present means that it cannot hold what null values means that a field must always contain what must always contain a value in it. So that's why we put what not new not null means that it can't what hold null values. Yeah. So that's why we put what that's why we put the not null at the end and then we end with what a comma. So we we'll do the same thing for the other tables. We we'll create the customer order table. We create the customer order line and then we create our customer table. Good. So now let's go to access and we we'll create the different tables. So I'll just tap Windows, type access, enter. I take a new database. This will give them name cells. Cells. Then here yeah, I browse for it to be saved in my candidate folder. My candidate folder is found on the desktop, and then here is my candidate folder. Then I click on open. Um, no, here is my candidate folder. Click on open. Then I save it inside. So now here yeah, it will save for the word in my candidate folder. Then I click on what create. So it has already created what my better base so i can log this step but i don't need it so you can also use s square to create tables in access what you actually do is that you go to create you take query design you close this table then you take what you go to the sq view here uib here and you type the code so i'll just click quickly copy as we did i'll just quickly copy it Just copy it and paste. Copy. So I paste the S square. So um always be careful this this the space you need to always leave a space between the the field name and its data type. Yeah. There's a space between them. There's a space between them. Space. Here, yeah, let me write this back. Pri primary key. This furniture and the spelling that is here must be the same as your field name above. If not, it will not run. So furniture. Easy. So when you're done, you click on run. You click on run here, it will automatically create a table. So if you can see a new table I've shown here, you can go there with what all the field names. Let's go to the design view and you can see the properties. If you enter maybe in furniture's name, you see here the field size is what 15 required. No, you go to category, you can see it's 15. You go to price supplier so you see everything has been done yeah so we can do now the next we we'll go to the next table we'll go to the next table so the next table is a table of customer the customer table we we'll just also copy and we we'll paste copy control c then we we'll paste so we can take off this one that will paste the customer this. You know that for your primary key, the, the spelling must be the same. Must have the same spelling. So put primary key. Primary key, which is what 
per mic here, per mic in this case here is other table, it's other ID. So we'll put other ID and then we'll lock our brace. So this is it. Then we we'll click on run. So you see, when I click on run, another table just opens. That's a customer order table. Yeah. We do the same with the customer order line table. So I will just copy copy the S square. Copy the S square and I go and paste Ctrl C. So we can take this one off, Ctrl V, we paste. So now in this case here we have two primary key. That's what other ID and furniture ID. So that's why we put primary key, you put your braces, you put the first one, other ID, furniture ID. And know that the spelling that is here, the spelling is the same. If not, when you click on run, it will refuse to run. Hmm? Yeah. Let me type back this. Right. Marie key. Primary keys are order, ID, comma, and what? Furniture, ID. Mm -hmm. If it's the same spelling, you click on run. So we can say here what a new table has been created called what customer order line. We'll do the same thing for the last table, the customer table. To copy and we paste control V. So let me type back this last line. Primary key. The customer table, the primary key is customer ID. Then we click on run. So what is it has created all our what our different tables so we can lock our part of the query. So all our different tables has been created. The customer table, the customer order table, the customer order line. The furniture table all of them has been created so let's continue I already done the tables they say populate populate the relation in your database with five to seven rows of the furniture data and three to four rows of the customer data the data entered for your customer order and the customer order line should be consistent with those of the furniture of the relation furniture and customer that is the data should derived from the furniture purchase transaction that the customer makes so here they say we should populate our table means we should fill it ourselves so here you can see us have already filled it and did the screen capture so we fill we just give values we fill it we fill all the four tables yeah so that's what they're asking us here to do so after that they say note for this subtax first write your first write in your answer booklet the S square query or statement used to implement its activity in your database. Suppose a fault has been identified with the product whose furniture ID is 10,765. So that means that on your table you need to have a furniture product with an ID of what 10,765. In order to contact all those who purchase this item of furniture, the manager of the company needs a list of their names and telephone number only. Also, the list should be in alphabetical order of customer name. A. Give an S square query that produces this list. So let's try to understand what um, the query is all about. So the manager of the company discovered that they had a product that had a fault and that product had a furniture ID 10,765. So now the manager said to you, the database designer, that you should produce a list containing what? The names and the phone number of all the people that bought what? That, 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 that product without, with, with that furniture with, with, that was with the default. So, and he says that it should, the list should be in what? Alphabetical order according to the names so yeah what what do we discover we discover that we are using two tables 
the table of the customer where we are going to get the customer name and the customer word telephone number and we also use for the table of the furniture where we write our criteria so let, let's just put our regulation our relation here relationship so you see that we need a table customer and what furniture but now how is the table how is the table customer related to the table furniture you have to pass what through these other tables to come and reach in the furniture so actually we are going to use what all the four tables in our data base is okay so what do we do we'll start by saying that word we should select what select from the customer table the customer name Still from the customer table, the telephone number. When you already work with more than one table, you always have to precise the, 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 the table name. So we say customer in the customer table. So we say customer dot customer name. We say customer dot telephone number. Now, yeah, that will select from here. Then now we also say what from the furniture word from the furniture table. Inner join the customer table. Then I will start linking up until we reach here. In I join the customer table, in I join the customer order table. And for you to join two two tables together, what is the primary key here? Must be the same as the foreign key in this other table. So you say on customer ID equals to what? Customer ID. Then I in I join again to this other table. In I join to what? The customer order line table. On order ID should be equal to what? The other ID here. Then now, we well, already put our furniture table thing, so we just now say on, on furniture ID here to be equal to the furniture ID here. So that's it. Then now, if it's to put it in alphabetical order, we'll come down now and say what? Well, uh, no, we'll first come and write our condition that where what? In the furniture table, the furniture ID is equal to what? 10,765. Then we'll come down again and say what? Well, ordered by, ordered by what? ordered by the customer dot customer name and then we end with a semicolon so yeah so that's it so that's it that has appeared here yes so now the b part says write an s square query to delete from your database the faulty product with furniture id number this so to delete just simply say what delete from the table name Furniture where furniture ID equals to what ten thousand seven hundred and and sixty five. So let's run this query in our database and see the result. Okay, so to create a query in database, we can do it either in what the design view or we can use what the S square. So let's do it in the design view. We'll come to create. We'll say what query design. Then we add the tables. We need the customer table customer order table customer order line and the furniture table then we close in the customer table we need what the customer name the telephone number and we also need what the furniture id in the furniture table but in this case we're not going to show the furniture id so we put here equals to what that default product that's 10765 then another customer name as wanted to be sought we'll come down here where the sort and we'll put in what ascending order so that this is just all. When you're done, you run your query. So this is what it gives us. If we go back to our S square view, we're gonna see that what is here is exactly the same thing that we wrote in our that we wrote in our in our, in our booklet. Exactly the same thing, no change. So that's how we write what S that's how we write S square. Okay, so let's continue. So now B says write an S square query to delete from the database the faulty product with furniture ID number of this. So just say delete from the which table? Which table do you want to delete something from the furniture table? Where what the furniture ID? Where the furniture ID is equals to ten thousand seven hundred and sixty-five. Then you end with the word a semicolon. So okay, that was it. C C says that we should alter the table customer order to include a field called validation. The field holds a short text explanatory text for faults found in an order or the word known if there is no fault. So here they say we should alter our, our customer table. Alter just means what we should modify our culture, our customer table so that it should take a field, a new field called validation and that new field holds what short text. So what do we do? To alter a table we just simply use what 
we use alter or table we give the table name that want to alter that want to modify alter table customer order and to it we add what a field called validation and is it can hold what text 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 here in the data type in sql is what var chat var chat so now d in your answer booklet mindful of how you proceed the list of names and telephone number in roman 4a above state in words how you will remove the faulty product from your database so knowing the furniture id of all the default furniture one will just have to query these ids out together with your related information so that was it so that was all on tax one now let's go to tax two which is well the programming part so here they say yeah we develop the year we develop the required program by the following steps below one in your answer booklet okay yeah yeah i didn't get all the question let's go to the question itself and read it there okay so here they say you are designed to program you are designed you are to design a program to help people in primary school to list all the prime numbers found within a given range of positive integer a prime number is divisible only by one and itself however one is not considered prime use the following algorithm to get the desired list of prime numbers so they say first you get the maximum value of the range from the user call it n fill your array with numbers from one to n Take your array size to be 100. Starting from the beginning of your array, eliminate the number 1 from the array by setting it to 0. Locate the first prime number. Set all the multiples to 0, except it, of course, the number itself, and then move to the next number. Repeat step 4 for each new number there until you get to the square root of n. Call the square root of n, n, obtain through the square root function of your programming language and round it up or down to an integer value note rounding may be either through a round function or whatever your programming environment might offer okay six display all the number in the array that are different from zero they should be all prime so yeah this this algorithm that i've given us is just an algorithm to what bring all prime numbers within a certain range within one to n so now, yes, an illustration that explains to us better. Yeah, we will illustrate how the algorithm works. You obtain, in bracket, declare an array, tap, of size, what, 100 of integers. Then you suppose the maximum value of your range given is 10. Then you fill your table with numbers from what, 1 up to what, 10, as shown here. Then you set the first entry to what, 0. Why? Because one one year is not a prime number. A prime number has two devi devi devices. That's one and itself. But yeah, one has just one device, which is itself. So one is not a prime number. So we set it to what zero. So when we set it to zero, now we identify all the prime numbers from two up to what root n and set their multiples found in the array as follow to zero. So this year they say five round up square root of 10 we get 4 6 identify two prime number identify two as a prime number so we have identified two as a prime number then what we set all the multiples of two to zero as you can see here then we identify the next prime number which is theory we set all its multiples to what to zero again then we repeat the step okay then the next available non zero number is what five but it's already greater than what root n so we what we stop them and we display or print all the non zero numbers of the array as the prime numbers the numbers between one to ten that's what two three five and seven so those are the prime numbers between what one and ten so let's look at this video to more understand yeah understand the function the algorithm pardon okay guys let us explain how that algorithm functions so the first step is, is to get the value of n from the user for example let's enter n to be 105 okay so enter 105 
the first step of our algorithm will fill our algorithm with numbers from what 1 up to what 105 so as you can see clearly on the screen our 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 array has been filled with numbers from 1 up to 105 now the second step is to set what is in the first index to 0 what is in the first index is 1 why are we setting 1 to 0 because what 1 is not a prime number for a number to be a prime number it has to be distributed by 1 and itself that means that automatically the number has to have two devices, but one half or just one device, so one is not a prime number. So we'll go to the next step. The next step is to what set what what is in the first index at index zero to what zero. So you can clearly now see that on, on our array it has set it to zero. The next step we we'll find for the next prime number after that zero. And the next prime number after that zero is what? It's two. And then we what we set the multiples of two to zero, excluding two. So we're going to set all the multiples of 2, but not 2 to 0. So you can clearly see that in our array, all the even numbers have been set to 0, except what 2. We, re we repeat again the step. We look for the next number, af the next prime number after 2, which is what? 3. Which is 3. It does the same thing. It sets all the multiples of 3 to what? 0. It does it again for the next prime number, which is 5. She is going to continue like this up to what? Up to the number lesser than or equals to what? The square root of, of n. Our n was 105. The square root of 105 is approximately is approximately 10 if we round it down. Yeah. It's 10 point something. So if we round it down, it's 10. So the prime number that is lesser than 10, that's 7. So if this is going to run, it's going to run and end at the prime number 7. So yeah. When it's seven, you can discover that now in our array, all what is not zero is what a prime number. So at that stage now, what does what happens? It prints what our array. So it prints all the numbers which is different from zero in our array. And what do we discover? All those numbers are what a prime number. So actually, we have printed the word prime numbers from what one up to what we have printed num prime numbers from one up to one hundred and five. So that's what the algorithm functions. So let's continue. Let's continue in how to write the algorithm if you already if you have understood it. Yeah. Okay, if we just understood the video, then we'll proceed. One, in your answer booklet, state the programming language you will use. So in this case, we are going to be using C. Then give a more detailed version of the algorithm above in pseudo code. In it let n to be 20 so this will modify the algorithm that have given to us above using what pseudo code and we let the value of n to be what 20 okay so in our algorithm we need to also have a function a function that will do what a function that will determine if a number is a prime number or not how do we know that a number is a prime number a number is a prime number if it has only what two devices that is what one and eight self so for that number we're going to use a for loop for i beginning from one up to that number then we we'll look how many numbers inside that range can can that can be that can be divisible by what that number and we count if the count is two they just have two devices it is a prime number but it's not two it's not a prime number so okay let's start we write our begin we set our value of n to or 20 so yeah my count is, is either will help me to determine which is which one is a prime number or not so i set my count to zero then i say for i beginning from one up to n what do we do we fill our array our n over four after filling our array at index one in our array we set the value to zero at, at index one in our array we have one so we set one to zero because it's not a prime number then now for i beginning from two up to what root n what should we do we should look for what we should look for what we should look for do this for loop here is to search for what is a prime number so now i will begin from one up to what to that to that i to that particular i is search if it's a prime number and how does that do it how does it do it you say if i mod j equals to zero it set counts to one and it, it continues the loop until when it goes up to the end n if n four then now if what your count equals to two that means you have just two devices as i earlier said one at one and itself what should you do now it should start from what from that number ahead not from the number you should start from the, the number ahead of that number to cancel what all its multiples to what zero and how do you do to know the multiple how do you know do to know yeah the number is a multiple of that number you just say if what j mod that number is equal to zero 
Is that it is multiple? Means that if I take what? If I take any number in my array, divided by that number, and the remainder give me zero. Means that it is a multiple. So what do we do? We we'll set what? At that particular position in our array, we we'll set that value to what? Zero. So that's how you do to set what the multiples. You go through all the for loop until you reach what end. So you set all the multiples to what? Zero. Then we end our if and we end our for. Then we end up we we set back our counts to zero. Because when you go back again for the an i equals three, it does the same thing. So our count has to be zero also. Then we end our if, we end our for. Then now here is to print. To print we're going to use a for loop for i beginning from one up to zero. But printing all the elements in our array that is what different from zero. That's why we say if what in our array it is if in our array at a particular index is different from zero, then what we display what is in our array uh, and then we end our if, end our for, and we end. So that's the detailed version of the algorithm above. Okay, then we continue. One, this is write a sub program called initialize that takes in two parameters the table itself and the, the maximum number. That, that fills the array tab with numbers from one up to what n. So to write the program, we are, you have to give what uh, the return type of that program is that which type of values will the program return or the program will return nothing. So in our case, we just want to initialize our table and so we are not returning nothing. So that's why our return type of our function is what void. Then we we'll give the name of the function which is initialize. Then we declare the parameters that the function is going to take with a data type. So the function is going to take a table and that table contains what integers and it's also going to take what the maximum number that can be stored in that table that's n which is also what an int yeah that's what so that's why we put int in front of tab comma int then our n then now we open our braces we declare our i our i here will serve as our counter so we see from i beginning from one up to that n what should we do we should put we should store all those values in our array means that when i is one we have at index one in our table we put the value of i which is what one at index two in our table, we put the value which is what two, and so on up to what two. So here, if we fill what our table with numbers from one up to n, so that's all for that sub program. Sub program. Roman to rewrite a sub program called verify prime that takes a number x and verifies whether it is a prime or not. For this, x is not divisible by any non zero number lesser than itself in the array. So. In this case, we have to return something. We have to return the count. We're going to use the count that will permit us to determine if the prime number or not. If the count is two, that's the prime number. But if it's not two, it's not the prime number. So it's in our mean that we're going to determine that. So we we, we give the return type. It's going to return an integer. Then we give the name of the function, which is verify prime. Then we declare the parameters that we take. In this case, we just take just the number itself that we want to verify if it's the prime or not. So which is also an integer. So int x. So we declare our i, we set our count to zero. Then we say for i beginning from one up to what that number that wants to refer to prime, we say if that number, if that number can be divisible, if some if a number inside our range from one up to that number can be divisible by that can that, that number can be divisible by it, we we'll count. So we'll count. Then at the end we we'll, we'll come up from our for loop and return count. So now in our mean, we're going to say if count equals to 2, it means what is a prime number. But if it's not 2, it's not a prime number. So that's it. Or man, for write a sub program called set 0 in bracket, tap, it takes in the, the table, the maximum number of elements in the table, and it takes in what? Y. And Y is that number that takes in Y and set all its multiples in the array tap to zero except the number itself as explained earlier so yeah we will not return nothing so that's why our return type is void and name of a function is set zero that we declare the, the parameters that it's going to take it's going to take the table which holds integers the maximum number stored in the table which is n which is also an integer and then the the prime number that you want to set is multiple to or zero which is y then now into our j we say for j beginning from what that number plus one because we don't want to start from that number if we start from that number it's also going to set that number to zero because any number it is a any number is a multiple of itself you can see be written as one times that number so you also set it to zero but we don't want to set that number to zero so that's why we start from what that number plus one up to n 
we we'll look for the multiples. How we know it's a multiple? We we'll take that. We we'll take. We we'll take what? How we know it's a multiple? If in the, in that our range, if any number divided by our, that our prime number gives us zero, that is a multiple. Then what do we do? At that particular index, we we'll set our in our table. We we'll set it to what zero. So that's all. We close our brackets. Close our bracket. Okay. The next. Write a subprogram called do display that display the all non zero elements of the array tab up to those in array position n. So, yes, to display what all the non zero elements in our array. So, our, our function just don't return nothing, we just hit void. Then, the name of our function is do display, it takes in the table and n. So, now we we'll, we'll put our loop for i beginning from 1 up to n. If what, if what is in our table is different from 0, we we'll print it out. Yeah, so that's all. The next, write the main program that, that makes use of the above program to identify prime numbers in a positive integer range. Make sure your program works correctly. So in our main, we have to declare what variables that we're going to be using. So we're going to use i, we're going to use n, we're going to use our array. As earlier given in our algorithm, they say the size was what, 100. Then we ask the user to enter n, so enter the maximum value of the range, that's n. When it enters it, we store it in what in n. When we, when we do that, then we initialize our table. Then that's what we fill our table with numbers from one to, and so we call the function initialize, which takes in the table and the maximum number of of the range, which is n. So we, there we we'll fill our table. Then I will say for i beginning from one up to what i less than equals to the square root of what n. So yeah, i is a it's an integer. If we're equating two things, means that automatically it will do the square root and take the integer part of of it. Up to what i plus plus it does what it verifies if i is a prime so we call the fun the function verify prime so verify prime returns what count so we say if the count is a two means that it's a prime better not equal to two if count is not equal to two it's not a prime so if count is equal to two it's a prime what do we do so that number is a prime we set we set zero we set um, the multiples of that number towards zero so we use our set function our set zero function to do that yeah then after that we we'll display our result we'll using the function word we'll do display and then return zero so that's all we mean so let's write this program on a compiler let's write the program on a compiler in this case I'll be using dev c okay I already wrote it just go there so the, here's it as we are using the square root function, that's why we are going to use indicate what we are going to include the math library because the square root function is found in the math library. And how 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 do we represent the square root function? We represent it as what s q r c the square root of what n. So we just copy our different functions as we explained earlier. They initialize, they verify prime, they set to zero. We just copy it and paste. We copy our do display base and our mean. And then our main function as explained. Okay, then we can run. When we run, it's the enter the maximum value of the range. Let's say 20 as in the example. What happens? It prints all the prime numbers from 1 up to 20. So you can see. You can see it prints them. Five. Good. Okay, but here we have a problem. It prints, it still prints 1. 1 don't have to be 0. I have forgotten to I forgot to set the value of what well, is in array one to zero. Okay, so this is where we have to do it. After filling our array, what do we see? We see at position one. At position one in our array. So our array, our array we are beginning with from zero in programming. Okay, here up here we begin. Let's see. Up here we begin to fill our array, begin from one. So our first index is one. In index one, we set the value there to what zero. Okay, so let's run it again. Enter n to be twenty. So okay, yeah, now it almost shows one. So I see now it shows all the prime numbers between two in, in the range one to twenty. That's from what two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, which are all prime numbers. Good. So that's it. We we'll continue with the next question. We continue with the next question. Roman 7 prints your entire program, including its sub program. So, to print, you just put what control print, 
print your work or you do a screen capture and you paste in what so any of the method you place in word then you print it out the next text your program with n equals 100 save its output and print it so okay let's go back to our program and test when n equals 100 let's go back to our program this is our program we run and we test when n equals 100 so that's what we have so if you identify clearly all the numbers there are prime numbers so they say we should make a screen capture for our screen and print it we we'll do the same thing to make a screen capture you press control print screens and you print in and you can paste in what in the word document or you can use snippy tools you snip it and then i snip it as a picture then you print it out so it depends on you okay okay so that was all on what came in june 2020 2022 so please if you if you learn something new just like subscribe and also don't forget to share with your friends it might also be of a help to your friends okay thanks